All right, there we go. Hello, everyone. How's it going? Team here, and this is PXJS DevStream, and we are continuing our work on Task Manager. And uh, yeah, so we are basically gonna um, continue whatever we did last time. So I think we added the first initial stuff, and uh, the idea is that today we're actually gonna do something differently. So while I was, you know, walking around doing my regular stuff, I actually came up with a way to write less code and not do any state management at all, because this is what we were discussing last time, right? So we need some sort of a state management. And I actually figured out how to not do it at all. So we're going to do that. Uh, why not doing it at all is good, I think, uh, is because, well, you know, the best code you can write is no code because you don't need to maintain it, you don't need to document it, you don't need to fix bugs in it, which is kind of great. We're going to see if my idea works out, but this is kind of the gist of what we are going to be doing today. And uh, speaking of documenting, there's one thing I completely forgot about last time is uh, to document our authentication setup because we did add this JVT and session things, but didn't describe why they are here, which I think is quite important. Uh, let me have a look at the chat. Uh, hey, Ron, welcome to the stream. Hey, Wise, welcome to the stream. Uh, hey, Malaf, welcome to the stream. Hey, Sirena, welcome to the stream. Lobby music. Uh, I mean, on one hand, I really want to use some music in my streams because I typically don't really code in silence. But on another hand, I'm terrified of the, you know, the copyright takedowns and I just like... I don't know if I want to dive into all of that. Even like I've read these stories even about the YouTubers who use the, you know, the freely licensed music, they still get copyright hidden by some weird third party companies that has nothing to do with the music, which is like, I don't know if I want to try that, but anyway. So I'm going to document this real quick and just say that we are, so we um Define those two callbacks, callbacks to have our actual user in the session because by default, um, next auth uses some arbitrary user object with arbitrary fields with. Uh, whoops, with no other way to override it, right? So, okay, so I just, just basically to leave this memo for us here so that next time we look at it and think, why is this here? We actually know what happens, right? Uh, hey, Vyas, welcome to the stream. Hey, Marco, welcome to the stream. Uh, hey, Malevolo, welcome, welcome, guys. Uh, have a coffee with yes i mean i've actually recently switched to the tea but you know i do like my coffee in the morning but i still prefer to drink tea for whatever reason in the afternoon anyway let me just commit that before i forget um so we got that get get uh, okay document user um documents overriding user object in session i guess right okay yeah. Um, might have missed the last time. Is there a reason for the... Yes, yeah, so this is the next JS thing that basically catch all routes. So anything that is auth slash whatever is going to be caught by this specific file. This is next JS convention, basically. Um, okay, so we did that. Uh, so that I don't have to remember about that anymore. Uh, hey, Ruben, welcome to the stream. All right, now we're coming to the interesting bit. As I said, we're gonna write less code today, which is always exciting, at least for me, I don't know about you. Uh, so let me start the Docker. So we got our MongoDB, just start that, okay. Cool, um, right, 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 let me think for a second. So we need to do npm run dev, right? So that should start our dev server. And we should have our localhost 3000 right over here. Uh, once it starts, come on now. Okay, compiled successfully, and there's our page. Okay, we are not signed in. Um, yeah, no, we are signed in. Okay, cool. So, right. So last time we did this thing where we got our servers, we got our task list, which we haven't actually started doing, and then we got our main content, which is right now, well, just text, right? So the problem is, uh, basically where the state management kicks in is that when we create a server, right? We select a server, we have to keep in the state what server we selected. And the same goes for what task we selected, right? 
But uh, because we are, or because we want to be good web citizens, uh, we actually want to maintain the URLs so that you can, you know, if it's a shared workspace, you can sh send it to someone. And if it's a link, it should include the currently selected project and currently selected task, right? So this is sort of the, so that you can share it basically, right? So since we are gonna have those IDs in the links anyway, why not use them for state management instead of actual state management and then leverage the server side rendering for the next JS to actually get this data rendered on the server. And then if we need it, we actually will, um, you know, refresh it or whatever in the client side, basically. That's the core idea. And you will see what I mean by offloading the state management into URLs in a second. Okay, because we are doing it this way, we would actually have to modify our code just a little bit. So um, here we have our index page, right? And uh, one thing that we have to figure out is Next.js um, nested routes. So I, I know that it basically supports it now. The question is, can we do it in a way that I think we can? So basically dynamic routes, right? So this is the dynamic ID. What we want to have is we want to have the root URL is basically going to be the same, right? And then we're going to have something like project some ID, right? So this is going to be another page. And then we're going to have project some ID task, and then that's going to be task ID, right? So we're going to have those three different pages that going to behave differently and going to fetch different things. Um, I mean, obviously, one way to do that is going to be create this project and then project ID thing. Uh, but is there a way to force I guess there's probably no way to force. I guess we could do catch all for projects. But I don't know if that's a good idea, because there probably is going to be a lot more logic in a task page rather than projects. So let's go with the let's go with the project page. So I'm going to create the project subfolder. And I'm just going to copy the index over here, which is going to be project ID.js, right? So we got this thing. And this is going to be the project page, right? Okay, and then index. So we are going to have to change our layout because obviously, they're going to be different, right? So our main page, uh, so theoretically, actually, this should start working, right? There we go. Okay, so right, the sidebar is broken, because that's a bit higher than that. No, even higher. Wait a second. Uh, that is one, two. I'm sorry, what? Um, okay, one, no, huh? components. Yes. Oh, uh, pfft, that's that's a wrong page. I'm editing the wrong page. Of course. This is this is what I should be editing. <laughs> right? I was like, why is it not working? I, I thought I did it right. There we go. Okay. So now they are identical, but we're going to change it in a second. Okay, as I said, the index page is now going to be super lean. And essentially, instead of having this main layout, we're going to have three different main layouts, right? So we're going to have the main layout, which is the, let's call it full three columns layout, right? Um, we're going to have so this is going to be two columns task layout, right? So this is going to be basically no, we actually don't need two columns, we only need one column layout. One column project layout is what we need. So it's going to be basically 4am for the sidebar. And then um, let's call it project. Um, I guess, yeah, let's call it project layout. Maybe using the flex uh, flexbox in this case would be better. But you know what, let's let's just go with that for now. So we are going to have this projects layout here, which means that task list is no longer going to be here, right? So it's just going to be this two things, right? One is the list of projects, the other one is something in the middle, we're going to figure out what later. And then the project thing, essentially, we're not going to have well, I, okay, we are, are going to have this thing here, but it's going to be a bit different. Right. So what we need to do to make this work is number one. So right now we are fetching our project list right here using the use effects, which I mean, you know, it works, we already saw that it works, but it's not efficient, right? Because well, Next.js has server side rendering. And right now it actually doesn't do it on server side, it's still like we load the page, then the page triggers the JavaScript, 
and we get the projects list from the backend, which it works, but it takes some time, right? So instead of doing all of that, we are going to pass the uh, projects. I guess let's call them initial projects, right? And we're going to put them here and we're going to default to the empty array. So instead of doing all of that, well, that's, that's actually not going to work, right? Yeah, okay, so we're going to have to do a bit more work than this. But anyway, so we're going to start with that. Um, I'm going to comment this out for now because we will need that use effect later on. But for now, so basically, if we reload the page, it should be empty, right? Because it's no longer fetching the project. So what we're going to do now is we're going to add that uh, get initial props i think actually we want to get server props i don't remember if we actually used it anywhere already i don't think we did right so we need that um where is server props no get server hmm. what was it data fetching or something data fetching there we go so we want get server side props yeah right this is what we want so we want uh, okay let me just paste my thing here first and then we want that thing. So basically, we want that page to already fetch the um, all the projects, right? And we're just going to say that projects are going to be right here in the props passed to the page, which means we can deconstruct them here, projects, and which means that we can use those projects to pass them into a th sidebar. Okay. Um, now I'm, I'm just wondering if we even need this at all. So we definitely need some local state because we would have to update it dynamically when we create a new project, right? Uh, anyway, okay, you know what? That's that's fine. Let's uh, let's import Axios from Redaxios. Whoops, Redaxios. There we go. Hey, Marina, welcome to the stream. All right, um, server projects. So we actually just want projects. That's good. Okay, uh, I guess, yeah, I guess that's fine, right? So we should get the projects, we should get the initial projects over here. Once we pass them, we should now actually be upon reload. Uh, okay, something went wrong. Document is not defined. Oh, Axios is not working. Uh, okay. That's a bit annoying, Redoxios. Can I use it with Node.js? That's the question. So I guess it relies on the blah, 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 uses native fetch, support all more. Uh -huh. Okay, can you use it in Node? I guess you can because otherwise it would be working, right? Uh, support for deno, add custom fetch config. So I guess they've added custom fetch as a config uh, version 3.0 that does this. Rams fetch option uh, function mock. Okay, so you can s add it a fetch. How do you do that? Is a morph. Yeah, okay. So we want, I, I think the uh, Next.js already does this, right? So how do we actually get, oh, okay. So you literally just pass it a fetch prop. All right. We just do that and theoretically should start working because Next.js polyfills the fetch itself, right? No, it does not. Axiom, okay, document is not defined. Uh, okay, that's a bit annoying. I mean, I guess we could use a different... Uh, wait a second, Next.js, Redaxios. There's got to be someone who used it with it, right? Uh, Redaxios, polyfill, blah, 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 blah. Okay, uh, so they just mentioned it here. Yeah, browser side, I know that it's going to work. We already tested that. That's all fine. How do you use it on the server side? I want to access or on fetch. Like, there's got to be a way to do that, right? Because I don't buy that. Uh, okay, this is not what I want to do. Am I just missing something from this? So we Axios gets JSON example, then fetch. And the next JS polyfills fetch, right? So we are fetch, um, a second fetch, data fetching, preview mode, how do I fetch data? Or, yeah, there we go, polyfills, fetch, replacing what VG fetch, unfetch. 
So server-side polyfills. In addition to fetch on the client side, Node.js polyfills fetch in the Node.js environment. You can use fetch on your server-side code, such as guest. Okay, so it should be, uh, should just polyfill it, theoretically. Which makes it even weirder that it, do, do I need to like restart it to make it work? That might be the problem, right? Because it might not have caught that it need, needs to polyfill the uh, fetch there. At least that's my guess. Document is not defined. Redaxios. Okay, so where is Redaxios getting the document thing? One question, does get server-side props runs on the node? Yes, it runs on the node. That's kind of the point. So it's, it's basically is executed in the backend when you send the request. This is why exactly it fails. Uh, so where is it? So this is exactly why it fails to get documents. Document cookie. Aha. Uh -huh. It tries to document cookie match. I guess this is what fails, but why does it even try to do that? Reduxios URL config, headers, deep merge. And I guess maybe I should just use fetch here, which is a bit annoying, but uh, that's fine. Our JSON. So if I do that, theoretically, I should be able to make it work. The only question is actually, how does it get the only absolute URLs are support? Oh, okay. Maybe that's the problem. Maybe the problem was in the uh, URL. Okay. So we actually want the absolute URL here. I completely forgot that it was that was the problem. Uh, you don't have the direct access to the database or you always need to fetch it. I mean, you don't have direct access to the uh, You do have direct access to the database from Node.js side, but it's better to just use the API because the API might, like you, you don't want to spread your logic all over the project, right? And it's nice to just have one endpoint that basically does all the processing for you and you can just query it. Um, okay, so we want our config. Um, remind me, how do we get it? Because I don't remember. There was, do we have, we, did we use the config anywhere? I have a feeling that we use the config somewhere, but I don't remember where exactly. Yeah, there we go. So we use this config here, but I think that's not how you use it in pages. Um, I need to probably look at the documentation. So uh, config. Yes, Next.js config. There was some sort of a thing you could import. Um, next config, uh, environmental variables. Yes, so environmental variables. And how do I use that in my... Okay, so this is just used, rewrites, custom, build, target, custom webpack. No, that's not what I want. Okay, there was absolutely a way to use the config Runtime configuration, that's what we want. Uh, ta, 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 ta. Yes, right, so this get config, yeah, right, okay, this was the package that we want, get config. Okay, so we got our const config, get config. Okay, uh, I think it should be await, no, it's not awaited, okay, so we do that. Okay. And then we only want server runtime config in this case, right? And we probably need to specify our uh, base URL here, which in our case is gonna be HTTP localhost. So we're gonna figure it out later with the whole, uh, you know, making that, I guess let's just do it right away. Why not? So base URL, okay, or localhost 3000, which means that this is gonna be this base URL, right? Okay, I don't know if it will, I think it wants, yeah, I think it wants pick it up unless we rebuild it because it needs to reread the config. So let's do that, uh, come on now. Are we running it? There we go. And there is next auth URL environment variable not set. Why is that supposed to be cannot the structure property user of intermediate value. What? Is that because we are not, okay. I guess this is because we need to send, oh, is it, can I just say credentials include? Would that work? I mean, the... <laughs> so here's the problem, right? Now we're doing this request on the server side, which means that 
it actually doesn't have access to the cookies we have, right? So we probably, yeah, so we, it seems like we will need to manage the session ourselves in this case, which means instead of cookies, we probably need to use headers and say authorization. Uh, bearer, I hope it supports bearer tokens, but we're gonna find out in a second. And then we already took the the token somehow last time. Uh, I think it was in the APIs, right? Project all new. Yes, right. So we need this get session thing. Okay, so with clients uh, get session. So this is our server thing. And then we get our user. And I think it was like you can get it from context, right? So you can just pass context, get the user, which means that, uh, wait a second, but we don't need user. We actually want access token, right? So we can just say a bearer. Now the question is, does it support bearer authentication or not? All right, uh, let me restart the build. Let me have a look at the chat. There's a note in Next.js doc that says it's better to import the API route instead of using fetch. Uh, I mean that the problem is we cannot like, okay, we can probably import it, but that would mean rewriting the whole thing. And I don't really want to do that. Uh, Jason token. Oh, wait, what? Uh, invalids. Okay. I guess I'm just thinking what would be the best way to do that. Wait a sec. Wait a second. Maybe the importing it would indeed be better, but that would mean that we have to like extract this into a function. Oh uh, boy, okay, this is a bit of a pain in, like server-side rendering is always a bit of a pain in ass. Um, okay, let me think. The problem with importing it is that basically we are gonna be coupling our backends to our front-end in this case, right? So in, if we later decide, say, hey, we see that the API here will are not working out for us and we wanna split them out, we're gonna have to rewrite like half of the app, right? So it's not it's no longer as flexible as it should be. Uh, although, uh, <laughs> yeah, I cannot just import that, right? Because it's, I mean, I guess I can just fake a rest here, but pff, oh boy, that sounds ugly as hell. Yeah, well, let's try maybe. I wonder if that will work. Okay, let's, <laughs> still, it feels absolutely horrible to do, but you know what? Let's try doing that. Uh, so I'm going to kill all of that, right? So I'm going to remove config. I'm going to remove that. We are going to import get project, uh, whoops, get pro, come on, I cannot type, get projects from, so no, it's actually here under API project all. So we get this function, right? And in this case, we're going to say await get projects context, and then res is going to be our own object that is gonna have a status function. That feels like a hack. <laughs> no, you know what, that's terrible, let's not do that. So what we wanna do is, I guess we wanna extract this into a separate function that says const gets user projects, right? And essentially it's gonna be something like that, return projects or we're not gonna even catch anything here. There's gonna be a sync and then we basically give it context, something like that, right? So, and then in this case, we can just do try projects await, get user projects requests, and that's it, right? So I think that probably should work better. Okay, so we do that. And then here we say from context on projects awaits, right? Okay, let's see if that works. Okay, uh, ta -ta 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 -ta. now what? Error serializing projects ID return from blah, blah, blah. Object object cannot be, ser what do you mean cannot be serialized to JSON? What? Okay, wait a second. So console log projects. So what do we actually get here? Okay, that looks correct. We also do get a lean. Yes, so that should be a why can't you serialize that? 
What do you mean it's not serializable? Error serializing project zero underscore ID. So that should, oh, is it not, is it not a string? Wait a second. Okay, I mean, I guess we can do projects, JSON, stringify projects. I mean, okay, we don't actually want to stringify it. We want to, like, okay, the dumb version of it would be projects, JSON, parse, JSON, stringify. So this will convert, so let's call it user projects. So this will convert the uh, what do you call it? The uh, object ID from Mongo into actual projects, right? And there we go. There they are. Okay, so that works. Uh, I don't like this thing. Why can't it serialize the object ID even though it is serializable and works perfectly fine? Here's the... Okay, so here's the question. Mongo's to... I mean, okay, can I do... I mean, Lin theoretically should do exactly that e2 object so i think that actually would throw right because it's already objects right so it doesn't have this two object which makes it weirder hey carlos welcome to the stream all right so why are you not happy <laughs> let me think if i do that it will start complaining that it cannot serialize the object id right Cannot be, cannot return JSON. Ser I mean, it is JSON serializable. What are you talking about? Are they using some weird way to serialize stuff? So they use this is serializable props, which is obviously not correct in this case, but. Oh boy. Okay. How do we go about this? Mongoose um, simple object id can i just uh is there a flag for mongoose anyone uses it enough to tell me if there is a flag that can basically um da -da -da, they can uh, just flip it and and return a simple string da -da -da, object id getting timestamps no that's not it the two string yes this is exactly what i want Auto convert object ID to string. Hey, Johnny Mnemonic, welcome to the stream. All right, object ID prototype. Okay, so monkey patching. I don't like this. <laughs> Is there a, here's a workaround, okay. Uh, mongoose types object ID, okay. I mean, obviously we can do it manually, but that sounds like an annoying thing to do. Tests, G, uh, da, da, ID false. Um, Okay, so we can do that, right. That sounds like a better way, but I still don't like it. I guess it's fine if we just serialize it to JSON and then sparse it back. I mean, it's relatively quick. No, but I mean, we're already using lin, that's the problem. So it returns objects. Object ID is still, I think it's considered object that has to JSON method that basically returns a string. But for whatever reason, Next.js doesn't understand this and says it's not serializable, which is like, you know what? Let's just go with JSON parse, JSON, uh, JSON stringify because that converts it. It's not a super great way of doing it, but I guess it's fine. I, I guess we could, we could, okay. Let's see. So what do we can console log user? Oh boy, why is it always like this? Uh, okay, let me see. So yeah, we got this thing, right? So there's ID and there's a user, which means that I guess we can just say map project to project and then ID. Yeah, you know what? Let's, uh, let's do it a bit more complex. We can also drop some stuff from it. So we're gonna have this minus V thing that we don't care about. We're gonna have ID and we're gonna have a user and then we're gonna have a rest, right? Okay, and this is gonna be our project. And then we're gonna return, we're gonna return our object spread back and then we're gonna return 
ID, which is gonna be string ID. I think that should make it work basically. And then user is gonna be string user. Cause I'm like, I, again, I'm not sure why exactly Next.js thinks that you cannot do that, but uh, that's fine. I think that should do it actually. And it's a lot better than doing JSON stringify. <laughs> Yeah, okay, there we go. There's a nice and, and convenient string. Oh no, why do you speak German? Oh no, Carlos. Wait, don't tell me you're actually German. Uh, get server side, can you, yeah, please don't return Jason. Yeah, okay, so yeah, okay, this seems exactly, but this is my good in this case. And they say, okay, force, yeah, okay, so they just say, hey, force it to string. That's, okay, that's a long, you know what, that's fine. We did the um, uh, serialization, so we're just gonna go with that. So let me just document this. Um, uh, convert mongoose object IDs to strings because Next.js doesn't understand. You can serialize them for whatever reason for some reason. Okay. Uh, I thought, no, I know German. I mean, uh, it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's a decent translation. Uh, as I said, we are removing code today and we're gonna make less code actually than was before. we got this projects thing. I guess this is types are missing. Okay, uh, hey Pego, welcome to the string. Okay, continuing. So we did that, we did that, we got the projects. So we're now passing the projects to sidebar, right? And well, it's not exactly refactoring. We're gonna be expanding the functionality a bit, but basically I came up with a way to not manage state at all, which is great. Uh, so what we wanna do is we want to set projects to initial projects whenever they change, right? Which means that if, but that shouldn't be a case actually. So they will not be updated at all. So I guess this doesn't even matter anymore. Right, okay. So cool. So we now immediately see all our projects, which is great. They are still not clickable. So the cool thing is that we no longer have to, so first of all, it doesn't have to be a button anymore, right? And second of all, we can just say that it has an href. Uh, so we have to see how do you use the Next.js link Basically, this removes the need to manage anything related to the current state of um, of this selected project, selected, uh, what do you call it? Selected task and so on and so forth, because we just offload this to the browser and say, hey, here's a link, just navigate to it, you know? Okay, and then the link in our case is gonna be, so it's gonna be, projects and then we're going to have this projects id over here right and that's basically it okay i think that should cover it actually so this should now be uh links and if we click it yep that's although i think right 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 there we go so okay for whatever reason it seems to, why is it showing me this? Fascinating, okay, that's a different problem, but anyway. So this now works and actually takes us to the project page and if I refresh that, this actually works as expected. The only problem is that there's this authorization state for some reason, but we're gonna figure it out in a second. Okay, so let us, um, let me just go that. Next, I with URL environment variable, did I? Did I not set it last time? Wait a second. I thought we defined it somewhere. Or did I screw, wait a second, uh, next. Oh yeah, no, but it was, I guess you have to define it, right? So this is what it wants, which is a bit weird, but that's fine. Okay, sure. Um, next step, so let's plop it over here. Or I guess, wait a second, we should be able to use the env, right? It does support .n files, if I remember correctly, so we can just do that. Um, and npm run dev. 
client side versus server side. Well, I mean, that's exactly as it sounds. Client side props are servered, uh, well, servered are fetched on the client side, and server side props are fetched on the server side. Okay, are you are you working now? Uh, blah blah blah. Yeah, okay, that's fine. I don't care. Why does it? Okay, it does work, but there's still this. Not always. Interesting. Okay, so we found a weird thing that breaks. Okay, anyway, this now works. So let's. Uh, whoops. Let us commit whatever we did. Uh, da -da -da. Get status. Get ads. Okay, switch to fetching a project user projects uh, on server site, right? Okay, cool. So we obviously will need to change our um, index page a bit because right now this, even though it does fetch as the projects, the other side looks like garbage, which means we need to do something about it, but we can do it later. Refresh renders on server side and that works on the client side. Yeah, but the Next.js is supposed to handle both. Uh, so I guess there is a, so basically this is probably either an issue with me using use session or an issue with the use session itself. I'm not even sure we need that use session to be honest, but we're gonna see in a second. So, um, I mean, it, you see in, in a few seconds, it actually does work as expected. The only problem is that it doesn't do it immediately for some reason. Right, so we're now going to this project thing, right? So we're gonna uh, do that. We're gonna fetch the same projects. Now here's the deal, right? So we fetch the projects. Uh, we also need to fetch the current tasks, uh, which means that we're gonna have this task. Uh, ta -da -ta. Right, so we need, first of all, we need the current project, const current project is gonna be projects finds project so that project id equals to current id whatever that is and now we're gonna go into next.js docs and see how do you actually get parameters so uh, routing is what we want da -da 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 -da. routing routing right dynamic routes and how do we get our so use router, can I do the same thing on the server, like in the, um, what do you call it? In the get server props. Please tell me I can access that thing. Wait a second. Okay, so we got our context. Let's try logging it, I guess, and see console log context, right? So we should be able to access that thing. Otherwise this, this is kind of pointless. Uh, imports, what? Oh. Right, because it's uh, again nested a bit more, so we gotta do that. Okay. Right, so we got our query. Okay, so it's params project ID. There we go. That's exactly what we want. Okay. Const current ID, current, let's call it current project ID to be a bit more explicit. So, which means context params project ID. And then we do that. Okay, current project ID, project, current project. So we pass it here, uh, which means that we got the project here, current project here. We pass the initial projects over here. And then, okay, so we actually need to pass it the current project as well, right? Da, da, da. And then here we can say the title is, oh, that's not what I want to do. Current project name, right? I think that should do it. Okay. Current projects. There we go. So if we refresh that, we got new projects. And if I click that, we got the tests. And if I click that, we got another. So that actually works as expected. Uh, if we go home, that loads, if we click that. Okay, so there's this problem we have to figure out. But other than that, give it a couple of seconds. I wonder why it takes so long. Like it theoretically should be relatively fast, right? Uh, I wonder, maybe if it doesn't re-trigger? Question mark. Okay, but anyway, we got this. Yeah, so we need to highlight the current projects in the sidebar, uh, which means that we need this current project. And... Let's call it is current 
and we're going to say that this project ID equals current project ID, right? So just do that. And then we go to the project and just, okay, I don't need any of that stuff. So we need this is current here. And then, okay, we probably need a different class name, right? So if it is is current, I guess we can do is current. I guess we can make the backgrounds lighter question mark. That's a bit too light. Okay, let's try making it darker, maybe. Yeah, that will blend with the background. That's a bad idea. So maybe not the background then. What would be a nice way of highlighting this? Okay, so we got this thing. Um, reverse colors. Yeah, we can do reverse colors. That's probably that will probably work. Okay, that. So if it is so oh, but that means we need to change the Oh, yeah, okay, we don't actually specify the text color there at all. It means we can say that if it is current, the background would be um, background gray, say 300, and then text is gonna be black. Otherwise, text, I mean, we don't need to specify that, right? So that I think that should work. There we go. Maybe not exactly super. Yeah, I think that looks better. Okay, so this works as expected. Now, um, yeah, so let's, I guess this is fine. So we did that. Let's do the, let's commit what we did for now. Git commits, okay, add basic project page with currently selected project. Uh, leave app themes. Yeah, that's what I usually do as well. Just leave the theme or, you know, the, the design in general for whatever, whenever the functionality is ready, unless you already have the design. Okay, uh, let me think for a second. So what do we need to do? We need to figure out why um, if we go home or whoops, if we go over here, right? Whoa, okay, aha, right. Okay, there's a bug. So the pro yeah, right, because the current project might actually be uh, null, which means we need to do that. Okay, and I probably should, we're we working now, there we go. Get amend that and add it to commit, there we go. Okay, now the problem is why is this here, right? So this leads us over here and then we got our session and loading thing. And the question is, seems like I missed a bit. We have projects now. Uh, the projects, like the last stream was when we added the projects. Console log, okay, let's see, session loading, right? So this is our two variables. Go here, where's our dev console? I click on that and there's our loading true and session is undefined. Fascinating. Why is it taking so long to load? Okay, so if I refresh it, it happens almost immediately, right? But if I navigate, it takes so long to get the session. Why is that a thing? Okay. Uh, okay, next auth. Uh, am I gonna regret picking next auth? Get session navigation. Okay, get session. Oh, wait a second, not get session, use session, right? Is what we do, use session. Uh, client API. Okay, uh, da, 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 use session, loading. Should I just do it in a get session because the server side thing seems to work consistently fine, right? ESRF token. So this is the login page. So as it says, client side, yes, server side, no, use session. I mean, the thing is that we don't actually do anything on client side. I don't know if we even need that anymore. We could rewrite that, right? So instead of doing all of that, we could actually 
is log in, just uh, pass this thing. And then if we are logged in, then we render the page. And if we are not logged in, I would just how do you redirect next JS? Uh, where's the next JS docs we have here redirect? I would just redirect the hell out of it. Uh, that doesn't seem what is this? No, that's not what I want. I want redirect conditional redirect inside of the component. Is that a thing? Painting slash where response helpers next router. There we go. I guess we could do the router push. Yeah, I guess we could just do that, right? Okay, uh, implant, ta, ta, ta. yeah, I guess let's go with this. It looks okay. So no longer actually need this use session here. We would need to do the, uh, the ease logged in thing. Okay, use effect, yes. And if we are not is logged in, we are gonna push login, yep is logged in over here and then yep 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 okay so we're gonna render it just in case the red rack for whatever reason doesn't trigger which means that here we need to do this is logged in thing right okay uh, get user projects okay then get user session so let's see um so get session from context, right? And then session. Okay, console log. Let's see how the session looks because I need to figure out what exactly I need to check to know if we are indeed logged in. Okay, session undefined loading true. Uh, that's I think that's wrong, right? Oh, we are in the wrong page, right? I should be fetching the index page. Okay. And then we should see it here, promise. Oh, it's it's an await function. Okay, sure. We can await that. Reload this. Oh, right, we are at log. Okay, so redirect works perfectly fine. <laughs> User, okay, so if there is session user, basically that's what we want, right? Okay, cool. Uh, okay, right, right, right. We don't want to be at login. We want to be over here. What is going on? Signed in as session user. Oh, 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 okay. Uh, yeah, I guess we can just give it a session, right? And just send it to the client. I wonder, is it going to tell me that it's not serializable again? Because that's going to be annoying as hell. Session if there is no session user. There's no session user. And if there is session user, guess we probably, yeah, okay. You know what, that's fine. Okay, cool. So that actually works as expected. We are signed in, everything works. Right, which means we have to change our thing over here to do the same, right? Uh, whoops. Okay, which means that we need uh, that. So we need the router, we need the use effect. We need this stuff. Whoops. We need session. And then okay, if there is no session, we do that if there is session, I guess it's better to check for session user because you will always have session, right? Da da da. And now we need to do the session thing in our backends. So it seems like we should probably at one point extract most of those things into a separate functions because we're going to be repeating them quite a bit. Okay, you need to import get session and now we got our session projects current project. There we go. Okay, theoretically. And it works perfectly fine. Okay, it's not exactly super fast, but I wonder why actually. It seems to be like a good second of delay there. Uh, what we can do is actually parallelize all of that, right? So we don't have to wait for this. We can actually just do session. How do I do this in a parallel manner? Uh, I mean, I guess extracting that into functions would be probably the easiest way. 
but what we can basically do, so we can basically await simultaneously four session user projects, but that's fine, we can do it later. Okay, so we did that, we did this, uh, which means we can now, okay, let me just first of all, so we moved, okay, get commits, da, 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 move session resolution to server side. Okay. Right, so now we can actually focus on the task list. Finally, uh, what is going on? There we go. Yeah, so if we navigate to the ear directly, it works as expected. If we go to the home page and click on this, it works as expected. Cool. I wonder if the session is okay. Anyway, <laughs> I have so many questions about the sessions and how it works, but we're going to figure it out later. That's perfectly fine. Um, I'm also guessing that session is probably not the slowest one rather than we are getting it twice, so maybe we should change this method to actually just accept the user. Maybe we should just do that. Because this, this would speed it up quite a bit because we need, we won't need to fetch session twice, right? Which means that we can just say, session user, right? I just passed it as a argument, right? Yeah, there we go. So I think that should speed it up quite a bit. Okay. There we go. Okay, let's see if that's bring us any performance improvements. Yeah, it's quite a bit snappier now. Okay. So removing unnecessary calls does speed your stuff up. Who knew? All right. Um, da -da 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 -da, let me think get status so what did we just did i just yeah okay i will amend that to the previous commit because it's kind of makes sense nope there we go okay now to the task list so uh, right so we are coming to the tasks right so what do we want to do we have a list of tasks here and we need to okay so i don't need that anymore i don't think i need next.js anymore I don't think I need any of that anymore as well. So we need to have a list of tasks <clears throat> and a way to create tasks, right? Again, the cool thing is that we don't have to manage task in state because we're gonna have it just link the same way we did with the um, project. But we do have to create the actual UI and we have to create the actual, um, what do you call it? Oh. The thing, you know what I mean. Maybe not. The the list of tasks and the create task thingy. Okay, anyway. Let's go with um, index.js first. I'm going to copy the thing with the project. Uh, it's going to be link. So we got project, project ID, task. It's going to be task ID. So it's going to be exactly the same, right? Task is current, right? So that's perfect. Project title is going to be, I don't think we need the title here. I don't think we need this helper here either because it's going to be task name, which means we can kill that. Okay, and this probably should be named task, right? There we go. Okay, yeah, right. So the styling should be different, but we're going to tweak it later on. So item center flex rounded. So we don't need rounded here. Mm, that is fine. Well, the list could be just like the projects. Yeah, that's that's exactly the point. So it, it needs to be a bit different. Uh, again, you know, I'm I'm drawing my inspiration from the Discord, and I think I'm going to be making it similar to the uh, channels list. So it's sort of going to be like you know this, but a bit, a bit more, I guess a bit more lines because we don't. I guess we'd want to have icons and stuff like this, but this is for later. Let's just start with. Um, with a basic task name, right? Okay, so we got our project thing. Let us, there's our task list. Um, so I guess sidebar, there's our sidebar. Okay, and then I guess new folder task list. Let's do it this way, index.js. Okay, so we are gonna copy the sidebar. I'm gonna put it over here. Okay, initial tasks, current task. Okay, initial tasks, rename this to tasks and this to set task. 
and all new tasks. So it's going to be, I mean, this stuff is going to work in more or less the same manner that the previous stuff worked. Let's copy these cards. I mean, it's, you know, there's nothing wrong with basically borrowing the patterns that already work, right? It's not like we are copying everything. So I, I think it's a, you know, it's a fair sort of remixing and reusing stuff is always very handy. Okay, copy this thing, plop it here. This is gonna be adds task on a new task. This is gonna be task name ref. Uh, we do not need a model here, actually. I have a better idea. Create new task, uh, task name, da 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 da. It's gonna be task, uh, project, so task new. We actually probably want project and then ID, then task new, or something like that. Okay, we don't need that on the new task is what we're gonna do here. Okay. Let's see. So we don't need model, uh, but we do need some states const. So use states false. Okay. Editing, I guess let's call it is editing because we're gonna have some sort of an editing mode set editing right so it's going to be set editing true we do not need model but we do need the whole div thing here save that uh set editing false that is fine okay i think that's fine for now and then here we need to do add task instead of add project and then here Right, so we got the, where's our task list? There's our task list, task list. Let's rename that. Which means we just need to say task list and uh, initial tasks. Okay, so for now, let's just leave it empty. Uh, let me have a look at the chat. Maybe a bit taller than the Discord channel list. You can fit small descriptions. Yeah, yeah, so this, like, we're going to see how exactly it will look. It's just, you know, the gist of it is that it should look like the Discord projects tasks and then the uh the last tab is is text uh did you try setting provider for the next auth uh but I, I mean i do have the provider set i think if i remember correctly it wouldn't work without it right i don't remember but i mean i did set up using their um tutorial so it should have been working anyway i think the back at like the getting session on the server is more efficient anyway uh, coming back to this, so this should be task, task, uh, ta -ta 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 -ta, task, ta -da -da, current task ID, right, right, on new, whoops, on new task, handle new task, that looks good. Okay, so there's our tasks thing, and, uh, okay, let's see, const test tasks is gonna be array id1 name test task description some longer task description and then icon uh let's have some icon here maybe that's the not the best one something like that okay and then we just basically have that multiple times and we say that our initial tasks are test tasks so okay yeah that looks uh, what is going on project id oh okay i need current project and i need to pass it to task right which means that task list needs current project and it needs to be current project there we go okay yeah there we go so we <laughs> looks absolutely terrible but it does render it's also for whatever reason in the dark background, which I think we should change. This doesn't actually need any, or maybe it does need the background, but it has to be like lighter. So 700 maybe, whoa, that's a bit too much. Yeah, I mean, okay, that looks abysmal, but you know what, that's still fine. Uh, maybe like 600 or something. Yeah, better. It's beautiful. <laughs> well, thank you, you know, I'm somewhat a designer myself. <laughs> Okay, let's not go that direction. Um, 
anyway, uh, okay, so let me just tweak this little quick, little bad, uh, tweak this real quick is what I want to try, what I'm trying to say is editing and this. Okay, so we're only going to render this thing if we are editing and uh, probably we need to wrap this into the Okay, there we go. Okay, so if I click that, that adds it. Okay, right, right, right. And then this should be rendered if we are not editing only. Okay, cool. So we theoretically should be, yep, toggle between those two states. That's perfect. Now the tasks, right? Let's make them look less like S and more a bit like something that is readable. So we don't need width. We actually don't care about the height as well much, right? So we want the, yep, that looks better. So we do not want the background because we don't care about it. We are also do not want the text. And in this case, I think I'm just going to do this. Okay. Um, right. So we don't want justify. We don't want. So we want, I think item center is something we do want, but we do not want justify center. We also probably want border border B, border B two or something like that. Yeah, that looks okay-ish. Padding bottom, or I guess margin bottom two. So is that some spacing? Uh, why is it only one? Sorry, what? Whoa, what is going on now? Encountered two children with the same key. Oh, right, because I cannot actually have the same uh, ID. Right, right, right. That is perfectly true. I guess this is why everything just glitches out because it thinks it's the same thing. Try setting provider from next oath client in app. I mean, it's it's too late. We're already using the uh, server side sessions. So, you know, we're no longer using the hooks for the uh, next oath or this whatever. We can live without it. The less code we have, the better it is, as, as usual. <laughs> okay. Um. So, blah, blah, blah. This, we got this. Okay, so where is, what is task? Right, why are you... P1 uh, MB2, right? So why is this only, why is there only one? No, it does have all of them, right? Margin bottom, this has spacey Y. Oh, because I have the space thing, right? Right, do I? No, I don't have it, right? Where is this coming from? Space Y not templates, P1, MB2. Yeah, so this space Y2, is it coming from, is it coming from here or some? Yeah, okay. Oh, right, okay, because we use the definition here, right? We don't longer need that. Okay, this was the problem. So uh, let's see, maybe some, so let's see, PX1, PY2, so a bit more spacing here. There we go, that looks a bit nicer. Okay, so we need a slightly different um, setup to it, right? So because we want, let me think for a second. So we have the task name and we also have, <laughs> it's gonna look terrible, but you know what? Let's go task description or uh, it's gonna be empty. Right, okay, but that also needs to be diff, I guess diff. Uh, maybe okay maybe that's not a good idea okay let's do it you know what a second so if i do two divs and we say that flex flex column right okay there we go we don't actually want that okay that looks nicer so we can say that this thing is gonna be uh, on bolts this thing is gonna be class text xs font oh, let's see how that looks uh yeah it's okay ish right so maybe if border b let's remove that see if we make it thinner doesn't look too different okay what if we do border border what if we do it gray so we have the background that is like 600 or something. What if we do it like barely? No, that's a bit too much. It's like 500. I think it should be lighter, right? So then it would look. 
Yeah, there we go. That looks nice-ish. Okay, uh, so all of that is links and all of that is clickable, which is perfect. And links are actually leading to correct things. That is cool. Okay, so now we need to change this thing to actually... Well, I mean, it's almost okay. Um, not, not exactly perfect. But uh, yeah, I think I'm I'm happy with the current task look. Let's see what happens if we... Where's our task list? So what happens if... Oh yeah, we I forgot about the icon. Uh, right, how do we properly structure this? So this actually should be flex. And then this should be another flex column, right? And then flex one. So this one will take up the whole space. And then here we're going to have this other div that is going to contain task icon. And this should be text for Excel. I don't know. Justify center item center. Just center everything. And how does that look? Uh, oh, God, that's too big. <laughs> okay, to Excel. Yeah, it's kind of getting there. Excel, maybe. There we go. Okay. Um, And then we need what? We need some padding on right sides or something. There we go. That looks decent. Obviously, with the same-ish icons, it looks like absolute garbage, but that's a different question. I think... Can we do like H full? No, that doesn't change anything, right? So we need... Items, no wait, justify center is what we want, I think, right? So because we want to center them vertically, no item center. I always confuse whichever one of those is. Yeah, there we go. Uh, Just a span on the title div. No, 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 no. We wanted flexbox because who knows what other elements we might add. So basically that's the team. Uh, that's the point of it. Tim, I found a sweet resource for color palettes. Oh yes, do send it. I mean, I'm, I'm, um, as I already said multiple times, I am really, really bad with design and everything. I'm hoping to ask one of my designer friends to actually do something that looks nice-ish for this uh, project, so that we can spend a few streams or maybe one or two streams, I guess, making it look decent. But you know, if you got any suggestions, feel free to send pull requests or. Send me a palette or whatever. Any plans to use, to use Hasura or TypeScript with this project? Not with this project. Uh, I did stream on Hasura and I did not do streams on TypeScript, but I, yeah, not, not a big fan of it, basically. Do you have Power Toys installed? Yes, I do have Power Toys installed, although admittedly I don't use them at all. <laughs> I know that there are some really cool projects in there, but for whatever reason, I just don't really use them. Okay, let's uh, let's address the add task thing. Vin shift C. Uh, I don't have them running. I think power toys. Power off. Yes, let's power off my computer. <laughs> Vin shift C. What does this do? Oh, oh, oh! That is very nice. Okay, so it has the color picker. That's really cool. Thank you. <laughs> I should probably at some point investigate them and uh, figure out what they actually do. <laughs> okay. Anyway, let us uh, make this look better uh, add new task let's just be let's just be very straightforward and do it this way okay uh yeah that looks like absolute ass um da -da 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 -da, kill that we are still wanted to be flex i guess that is way too big and way too rounded okay can use a bit more padding Maybe even a bit more padding. Okay, that looks good. Background is a bit too dark. I think something lighter would probably be better. Yes, there we go. And then text black would be good. There we go. That looks absolutely like garbage, but you know what? Uh, restream might have hit my message. So if you send links, uh, that's YouTube. That's not restream. YouTube, for whatever reason, just kills links. Uh, it's like, even if it doesn't consider it spam, it just doesn't appear, even though I have the allow links enabled in the chat settings. I don't know how YouTube works. Don't even, don't even know. So basically either share it on Discord, please, or share it on Twitch, uh, because those are two places that allow links, <laughs> which is, uh, silly to say, but hey, okay. Uh, let me think. So maybe we, maybe we do not want black text. 
Is it a bit too contrasty? So what if we do this? Uh, yeah, I guess we can actually just go without background at all, right? So we can just go that and this looks like a fine button. Uh, so I guess we can do over PG gray 600 or something. How does that look? I guess 700 is what we want. So darker stuff. Yeah, there we go. Okay, that looks fine. All right, so here, task name, ID, task name. It's gonna be task name, blah, blah, blah. This is task name placeholder. All right, button, create, adds, cancel. Right, okay, how does this look? Task name, okay, so add, cancel, look terrible. Okay, so Twitch does need links. Let's have a look, happy hues. Oh, yeah, that's some very slick colors. All right, cool. Yeah, sure. We can uh, we can probably use that later. That looks very nice, actually. But I mean, I think there's like a quite a lot of apps. Anyway, you know what? Let's again, let's not focus on design for now. Let's just make it work first. <laughs> and then we can uh, play around with colors and everything else. Right, so task name. So we need to change the add and I guess add button seems fine. Let's change the cancel button a bit. Make it text blue, so it should be lighter, right? So I guess like 200 or something. There we go, that looks better. And then maybe make the background here uh, lighter as well. Yeah, that, uh, that, that, that looks okay, I think, right? Okay, now we did the whole UI thing. If I refresh that, that still works fine, right? So we got this thing, a task that works, blah, blah, blah. Resets it, test, add. Okay, so now we need to actually implement our creation of a task. That's something that we haven't actually done here. Right, and this needs to reference to current project because the task will be created for current project, right? Current project ID. Right, okay. Okay, okay. So uh, this needs, yeah, right. So here's current project, current project, right? So we have it here, right? Good. Okay. Okay, so we got this project. We need the new folder called task and we need the new thing called, uh, wait a second, I'm creating it in the wrong folder. Should be an API, right? Project. Okay, how do you actually... How do you do that? So I want it to be, is that? Oh boy, okay, maybe. I mean, theoretically, this is idiomatic rest, right? Because we have like project reference, we got the task new. How do you do this with the next JS? <sighs> okay, docs, routing, routing, where is my routes? Pages, API, post ID. Can I do nested routes with a placeholder? Slug. Uh, okay, so we can do the catch all thing. Optional catch. Uh, ta -ta 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 -ta. Okay, so you're telling me I have to basically manage it myself, which is annoying. You know what, then let's just, uh, let's just, do it a different way and just say we have a task and we have a new task, right? So let's just go with that because screw that. I don't want to fight with, uh, I don't want to fight with Next.js basically. So we are going to have this name and then we're just going to basically say that project is current project ID. So I'm just going to pass the project as a value even though that's not, you know, how do you, do idiomatic REST API, it's still easier. So we're just gonna go with that <laughs> because I am too damn lazy to do all of that stuff. Okay, so we got name, we got current project. We got the user, which means that we need to actually define our task schema, right? So we got our project, let's just copy that. We're gonna have task.js. So this is gonna be our task schema. There we go. Okay. Name user project. Uh, so yeah, I think it would be easier to copy from here. Project. 
we are gonna have description that a tie will not be required so we are gonna have icon and we're gonna have text which is the full text that we're gonna be working on later on right i think that covers it but we might change the schema later on so we need to plug it into the db on task schema require task there we go okay uh t -t 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 exports task e model task task schema there we go okay cool so now we got the task which means that we can say we get the task from here new task ta all right which means that we also okay i think the name for now is fine so we can add description later on somehow user id and then project is current projects i think that should do it and then we send it back so i think that yes yeah, so <laughs> creation of api for this project is incredibly simple uh okay so we did that we task new we do the projects yeah that seems seems like it should do it right okay uh let's let's actually give it a shot uh, i think we should do we need to restart it here's the question does build next those okay let's let's just give it a shot test add um blah 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 post network bad requests why is it bad request projects path project is required but i oh did i wait a second uh why are you unhappy about that so we are sending name project right oh 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 okay okay it's not current project it's just project so it's my own mistake which means that this is just a project here right i can just do that perfect cool okay so that now actually should make it work console clear everything reloads okay new task add it actually works okay let's see so we get the new task over here cool it works as expected now what we need to do is actually look so okay first of all we need to close that thing after the task is created uh which is here right no not here uh where's our add task thingy we no longer need those api for now we need task we need this add thing and we need to set editing falls over here there we go okay next thing we need to do is okay so we no longer need this test tasks we actually need to fetch our task which means we need that other methods which is going to be all right all js so do, 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 get let's call it get project tasks it's going to be project and then here we get our task this is going to be tasks task finds project lean tasks okay session i mean we don't actually need i guess we do need a user if there is no user then we just throw new error all right i guess no you know what we do want a user because we want to get tasks now nah, i mean okay for current project because it doesn't matter okay you know what that's fine so if there's no user we just throw new error not logged in otherwise we get project tasks and this is going to be a request uh da -da -da. ah here's the question yeah right so it shouldn't be all it should actually be project id right so this is what we want to do and we want to do this in oh where was it context so params project id i think right so request params project id yeah so that looks correct it's gonna be tasks and this is gonna be i think that should cover it but i i mean again we're i guess we should test it anyway just in case but we are going to be using this function instead and we're going to be using it in our okay so we don't need that anymore we're going to be using it in our project list over here right so this is uh 
yeah, I guess resolve current project, and then we're gonna fetch current tasks list. Fetch task list for current project is what we wanna do. Okay, const. Okay, uh, get project tasks is what we wanna do. Uh huh, and we're gonna current project ID is what we pass it, and then we just do that, right? And then we can say, okay, projects, tasks, blah blah blah, and then task list, we just say that initial tasks are tasks. I think that actually covers it, right? Unless I screwed something up, that should theoretically uh, list us. Uh, all right, of course, we need to do the same thing for tasks because Next.js, for whatever reason, cannot serialize stuff correctly. Well, that's fine. We can do it ourselves. Okay, so we need the VID. What was what was in the schema? I already forgot. Uh, where's the database? So project, user, and ID. Okay, user project and id okay id user project string projects yes okay that's a bit of a bit of an annoyance but you know what that's fine it's like i think that's the only place we will have to do it uh oh 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 right i probably should rename it task there we go and uh, no, no 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 this should be project this was correct Okay, are we good now? New task, hey, it actually works. Okay, cool. Another task, add, it works. Okay, reload, it works. Okay, cool, so theoretically, those should take us to non-existent page. Okay, of course, ah, we haven't created, right. So I guess it's a good point to commit. Uh, Get add, get commit, add way to create and Fetch list of tasks for project. Okay. So I guess I'm just gonna add another page which basically is gonna list, or I guess the give the details for the current task, and we can wrap it up here for today. Um okay, so we need this. We got the project. Can I actually do that? So this is the problem, right? Can like next year, next JS routing seems quite limiting, even though it is, it, it does support this stuff, right? Oh boy. Okay. How do we actually do that? Oh no, you can do that. Okay. So I can, uh, so we can come folder. Uh, okay. How will it pick projects, project ID? Okay. So we create this folder. I'm gonna create task. And then we create the file called task IDJ. I, I wonder if that will work. I'm gonna copy this whole thing, copy this whole thing. And then this here is gonna be this is a task page. Right? So we should have access to project, and I guess here is gonna be const current task, and it's gonna be tasks find is basically going to be this stuff, but for task current task ID, da, da, da. so this uh, whoa, 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 whoa. task ID, current task, da, task, task ID, current task ID, there we go. Okay, and we should be able to just give it here. And you know what, let's just uh, do that. JSON stringify current task. Okay, I think, is that correct? All right, of course, that's, yeah, obviously our import path are broken because we are way more nested now. I believe it should be this, which is not exactly nice, but uh, is that right? Is that <laughs> Uh, okay, current task is not serialized. Why is it not serialized? Task ID. Huh? 
Current task returned from get server side props cannot be serialized as JSON. Please use null or omit the value altogether. Interesting. Why can't you serialize it as JSON? Fascinating. Um, task should be task list so that we can create a task. You got a simpler way. Uh, what do you mean, Carlos? I'm not sure I understand the question. Can you please clarify? Current task. What is it like about the current task? I don't understand. Uh, current task returns cannot resolve. Blah, blah, blah. Okay, let me just restart this so I know that the log is clean because I don't understand what it complains about. Come on now. Reload that. Uh, errors. Errors serializing current task returned from get server side props. But it, you don't. Where is what? Okay. Why it doesn't log it? Current task. Is there something off? Oh, it's undefined. Interesting. Uh, okay. Oh, right. I'm I'm an idiot. Right. This is the problem. <laughs> okay. It was very simple. We should be working now, right? There we go. Works now. Talking about the component name. Uh, did I? So this is task list. This is add task. This is task. Seems okay. Task should be task list. So we create a task. I mean, I'm not I still I'm not sure I understand what the problem is. Seems everything seems to be in order. Okay. Yeah, so I, I think it, it was not not a bug, just me copy pasting code and then not fixing it. This seems to be working as expected. And I think that will be so if we switch the new task, another task that actually works. It's like it seems to be working perfectly fine. Uh huh. Not quite. Okay, so where are my where are my tasks? And why are they not? Uh, oh, okay. I know what happens. Okay, right, 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 right. So what happens now? Never mind. It's an, okay. So <laughs> I mean, you know, looking at the code on stream might not be the easiest task as well. So. So what happens now is that when we switch the pages, it does so the fetching happens in the background, right? Which means that task list is updated. Da, 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 there it is. So we got our task list over here. And if I console log initial tasks, initial task, I believe we should see the new list every time, right? So there's our two tasks, there's empty. And there's our two tasks again. So it does updates, but we do not actually change the current state, which means that we need this use effect here. I wonder if there's a better way than doing use effect, which will trigger an initial tasks and we'll do set task initial tasks. Uh, whoops. I think that should do it. Okay. Yep. That actually fixes it. So it seems to be working and uh, relatively snappy actually, which is uh, kind of neat. Okay. Git adds, git commits, adds basic task page rendering. Okay. I think that's a quite productive stream. I mean, it was already like one and a half hour. So I'm gonna push that to the GitHub. And if you guys have any questions or suggestions, now is the time to throw them into the chat. If not, we can just uh, wrap it up here and uh, go about our business and continue this next time. I'm not sure if I will have time this week, but uh, absolutely next Wednesday. So we're gonna see how that develops basically. As usual, the source code is on GitHub under building X with JS slash uh, task manager. So we're still, if you have any good names for the um, for well, the thing, do let me know. I'm, I'm still trying to come up with something that is good enough, basically. But yeah, not not exactly the creative guy. Uh, but yeah, that's basically it from my side. Okay, we still need to add 
like we still need to finish the functionality and then add some tests and then add the continuous integration, then add some continuous deployment. And yes, next time we will do the task with Markdown and potentially the more fancier editor. We're going to investigate basically what kind of editors are available. I really like the notion uh, kind of blocky editor, but we're going to see if there's anything open source like this. Uh, but yeah, this is basically it from my side. So it doesn't seem like there's any more questions or suggestions. So thank you guys very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the stream and I see you next time. Bye.